Wrocław, city of smiles, home of outgoing and friendly people, place full of new ideas, creative individuals, city of opportunities. We combine tradition with modernity. We boldly look ahead, ready for new challenges. Our city is full of antiques, multicultural, even inspiring history. But behind us, we merge with the present and forge into a better future. We engineer prevailing simple and practical solutions. Our actions are based on observation, analysis and pushing the goals. With hard work, we accomplish everything we set out to do. We are Wrocław University of Environmental and Life Sciences. My name is Carolina and I'm USAFE project coordinator. My name is Marta and I'm the Promotional Activation project coordinator. My name is Magda and I am the Before the Platforms project coordinator. My name is Tamanta and I'm the leader of our team. My name is Adrian and I represent all team members. In the last year we manage four different projects. Today we present to you results of the two most exciting ones. Before the Platforms. As we all know, water is humanity's greatest asset. It's essential for men, plants, and animals. There is no life without it. It's not that easily accessible in some parts of the world. The shortages are easy to notice. However, there are occurrences that turn this asset into a devastating element. Water can be damaging and in excess lead to tragedy. The flood of July 1997 imprinted in our memory very strongly. 55 victims, tremendous material losses estimated at 12 billion Polish zlotys. As a result, 7,000 pe people become homeless, 9,000 companies and 500,000 hectares of cultivation suffered. I experienced the 1997 flood myself. I was seven years old and I couldn't understand why there is no drinking water, electricity or food. I was standing at that balcony and I was asking myself, where did all that water come from, two and a half meter high? We can clearly state that floods are a real problem in our environment, especially for Wrocław, with seven rivers running in and out of the city. Need assessment. Looking at the scientific data from past 10 years, we can clearly state that our climate changed. Changes in the atmosphere, like increasing in precipitation, as well as expansion of civilization accompanied by construction in the floodplains, will lead to increasing number of flood victims. In 1997, after the water level stabilized, it turned out that over 30% of the city is underwater and has no drinking water, electricity and gas. Merely 13 years passed with at the tower of May and June of 2010 Another huge flood came. Once again, many neighborhoods were found underwater, despite the wave of 2010 being a hundred centimeters shorter than in 1997 one. Currently, Wrocław is undergoing a full renovation of its water hub. Will that provide sufficient protection for its citizens? No, because it's not possible. And now, let me ask you some question. Have you ever seen the flood? Have you experienced it? Do you think that children are prepared for this phenomenon? Let's look how they would react in the event of the flood. Okay, we saw only two children who said that the flood is something when the pipe is broke or the flood is a ship. And most of them answered us the same way. So we can state that they are totally unprepared for this phenomenon and when this cataclysm hits, they will ne not be able to deal with it, putting them in danger. In September 2014, we started a series of workshops for children. All the materials were prepared by our team under the supervision of professors from our university to make sure they consist of reliable and up-to-date information. We started the classes with projection of an educational movie. Then, kids filled out an educational booklet filled with different tasks. <coughs> Afterwards, in five, six-person teams, they would look into various scenarios of behavior during floods. Outside of the typical topics, we tried to make them realize how important things like system solution 
or cooperation between emergency services are, as well as how to behave during an evacuation and how to protect your home before leaving it. In order to introduce entrepreneurial spirit, we used gamification. Children were split into three teams and they were performing tasks to gain points tracked on a special board. In April 2015, we concluded education in eight schools, 23 classes for over 600 kids. After the conducted workshops, we pulled the teachers. Let's look at the results. Majority of them recognized the form of the workshops as a great way of imparting knowledge. Kids took active part in the tasks, not resigning to passive listening. Interest in the workshops is growing continuously but we realized it's not physically possible for us to conduct workshops in all schools that contact us. We had to find a way to reach the increasing group of recipients. Our workshop were the initial version of our service, our minimum viable product, the one that we're currently transforming into a board game, which will be a foundation of our business model. So we went one step further. And in partnership with Board Days Company, we're preparing an original project of a board game, educating kids and adults alike about the flat. It will allow us to increase the scale of our activity tenfold, as well provide financial backing for the action in the future. It will be uh, in sale in the autumn, right as the school year starts. To optimize production costs of new elements, we organized gathering in schools that took part in the first stage of the project. So far, we collected 242,000 pounds. To summary, the problem we notice in our environment is flats and insufficient knowledge about their phenomenon. Through need assessment, we confirmed that this problem will intensify in upcoming years, and the renovation of Waterhub will not assure safety against waves. Results of conducted surveys suggest that children are completely unprepared for the cataclysm. To fill in the substantial lack of knowledge of our target group, we conducted a workshop with over 600 participants. To ensure scalability of the project, we prepared a business model based on a flat themed board game that will reach a wider spectrum of customers which will provide further support at the development of the project. Our action is supported by Credit Agricole, Center for System Solutions, Regional Water Management, Urban Water Supply and Storage Company, Water Dance. Dear judges, thank you for your attention. And now we will move to our second project. <coughs> Next project run by our team is the seed bike. It's an answer to two separate problems. Firstly, the repression of local edible plants caused by an influx of novelties from around the world and temporary trends in cultivation. Plants such as rabarbar, yarmush, agres, topinambur and bochvina disappeared from our tables for many years. We ignored them in favor of borówka, ziemniak, botwina and spinak because they are treated more like oddities rather than their real vegetables their price is still not adequate to production cost. Another problem that we notice is wrong use of gardeners' livelihood assets, such as soil, experience, and time. Majority of them cultivates common vegetables or flowers, which generate no income or even increase the cost. This can lead to demise of the garden plot and worsen its owner's financial situation. Statistical Polish gardener is a pensioner without higher education, running his garden plot for pleasure, planting flowers and vegetables for personal use. For most of them, their pensions are insufficient because they receive only 900 Polish złotych monthly. So my question is, can we empower this target group and teach them how to use their assets? You probably think, how can it be connected with repressed plants? There are four aspects that speak in favor of the plants we mentioned. Health, economical and cultural values, as well as difficulty level of the cultivation. They are more enduring in our climate, resistant to sickness and very easy to grow. Most of them are perennial plants, quickly adapting to changing atmospheric conditions. 
They don't require big investment. They can be cultivated without plant protection products. What's more, they have been present in our culture for years, which is confirmed by all recipes. They outclass other species when it comes to content of vitamins, microelements, and protein. All of this results in a much lower production cost. Each of gardener has a garden plot that averages 200 square meter. Let's imagine they all use that space for cultivation. <coughs> Comparing cultivation uh, of the forgotten plants with the more popular species, we can reduce production costs almost three times. At the same time, their market price is higher than the price of more widespread substitutes. We are just engineers, but we think that scenario where we cut the cost while increasing the price substantially is the perfect situation in business. So, summing up, our goal is to bring back the repressed plants to gardeners' environment as much as monetizing their crops and products. We can discuss if restoring of this species is essential, but by growing rhabarbar, yarmush and topinambur, gardeners are able to make a profitable cultivation. Action! We started our activities by finding forgotten plants that will be profitable when cultivated. We compose a list and then use it to purchase required seeds and cuttings. On our experimental garden plot we plant 10 plants of rhubarb, 16 gooseberry bushes, apple and cherry trees of traditional varieties. During realization of our project we had a problem how to get money to start it. Because our previous action was based on working with children, we gained a skill of teaching them. It started to be our specialization. Using our entrepreneurial spirit, we prepared a series of workshops about plant cultivation, during which we explained to children how difficult this process is and how food's road to shop shelves looks like. Each of them had an opportunity to plant his own onion called Szczepanek. <laughs> What's more, money we earned this way were used to purchase our first seedling and let us launch our seed bike project. We invited to our action two retired gardeners, Mr. Stanisław and Mrs. Krystyna. At this stage we want to focus on cultivating one type of plant. Each of the participants describe in detail what sort of plants do they grow on the garden plots. None of them were available for manufacturing of homemade products. So, we inspired gardeners to act by giving them five cuttings of rhabarbar each. So, this is the moment when we collected our data, planted our plants and start cooperation with our target group. But we still miss our business model. This is jam jar! <laughs> From collected crops, our beneficiaries would create ecogens, which would be distributed with our help. The boss says we are establishing a website that will allow ordering our products, seedlings, gems, pots, and arbus, as well as other products manufactured in partnership with the gardeners. We also constructed our seed bike. It's a mobile store that will be used to sell our products on local markets and will become an icon of our project. Currently, we are waiting for crops in the autumn. After the first harvest, we will prepare 230 jars of gems. We also have a place to prepare our products that meets all requirements. Next spring, however, it will be over 1,000 of gems. But this number will still increase because we're still planting new plants and invited, inviting to our project new gardeners. Summing up with the first edition of Seed by Project. We prepared our own source of cuttings, making us independent from outside suppliers. We ensured self-funding of the project. We created brochures with guidelines on how to cultivate our plants. We directly engaged two gardeners who started their own self-sustainable cultivation. We designed ginger as well as pot for selling seedlings. We found first clients willing to purchase our products. We built a seed bike. That was the most important for us students from the University of Environmental and Life Sciences, we managed to bring back to gardening community 36 plants that were pushed out as well as three traditional varieties of fruit trees. But that's not all. Our future plans include expansion of our actions. In the autumn, due to growing seasons, we will continue seeding your species on our plot, 
Yarmus, Pachina and Topi Nambur. We want to include new beneficiaries into our project, give the involved gardeners seedlings for other repair species and expand our distribution network. This action was made possible by our partners. Today, we presented to you two of four projects run by our team. Each of them is special to us in a way, unique, addresses various problems present in our environment. Our project focused on improving livelihoods of local societies. We don't look for distance problems, we don't run far, because we can change them off in the space closest to us. It's hard to believe, but just a year ago we offered on this stage only two ideas for projects. Today we presented to you effects and progress which we are able to expand into next year of action, into years to come. A year ago our team had five members, one project and unstabilized structure. Today we are representing a growing unit of 15 people working daily on their project. Among them when the platform and sit by. And this is just the beginning. We are a team. We, we are, are friends. friends. Every day we put into our projects what best we have to offer. We are an Actus Up!